We're gonna paddle this bona fide EX-123 that Yak Attack was so kind enough to uh, allow me to borrow and uh, hopefully stay dry. Good boat, bad day. Let's get to it. in a bona fide EX-123. Like I said in the intro, um, I want to appreciate my friends over at Yak Attack for allowing me to borrow this boat. I don't own an EX-123, but it's uh, relevant to today's video. So I had a subscriber ask a question. Um, they actually asked this over on Reddit, but they wanted to know the difference. So if you're shopping for a kayak, you've got a sit-in fishing kayak and a sit-on-top fishing kayak, and he really wanted to know what, uh, what would be the difference? Why would I pick one over the other? So we're going to talk about it to the best of my ability. Um, if it's your first time here, thank you for coming to Way of Fishing. Uh, please check the video link um, for all first-time viewers. Um, I appreciate you guys hitting the subscribe and clicking the bell icon below. So if you're looking to buy your first fishing kayak and you want to know, should I go sit in, which this is the bona fide sit in model, or should I go sit on top? There are some definite differences and some definite drawbacks to each, and we're going to try to cover those. So I reached out to a few friends of mine. Um, some uh, that work at Appomattox River Company and John over at Yak Attack, and I asked them the same question. So here's the list of the differences between the two, help you make a better buying decision. Again, I apologize for the wind noise. Uh, one is uh, safety. So the key thing with kayaking, kayak fishing is an extreme sport. Don't, don't get it mistaken, it's an extreme sport. Um, Man, this wind is really causing me a lot of work here. So if you were to flip your boat um, or turtle it or whatever you know the, you want to call it, um, first of all, always wear a PFD. I'm sitting in three feet of water, but I'm in a kayak, so I'm wearing a life jacket. Make sure you wear a life jacket. If you were to flip your boat, you could cling to this if it was upside down and it trapped air in the inside of the hull. You could cling to it. Um, there is a rear hatch. Um, depending on how well the rear hatch on the sit-in that you have seals, um, the boat may go inverted and bob because that rear hatch area is going to be full of air. But for the most part, a sit-in kayak, if you take big enough waves or if you roll the boat, it's going to fill up with water. Uh, there is no secondary flotation inside of this. With a John boat or a bass boat, you've got foam in pretty much every single cavity that they can put it in. It's full of foam. So they're not gonna sink to the bottom of the lake. They may go level with the water. A sit-in kayak is going to go under. This entire front area from where I'm sitting to that camera that you're looking at me on is gonna fill up with water. There's no foam in there. There is nothing aside from just hull displacement in the water that's making this thing float. <clears throat> Sorry, I got pollen in my throat too. If rough water or possible flipping of the boat is in your, you know, like it, it's possible, then you don't want to sit in kayak. That's the first thing, okay? Uh, we just get that out of the way now. You don't want to sit in kayak. Um, so for me, you can go back on my channel and look. My first kayak was a sit in kayak. I got caught in some terrible waves and uh, I took waves over the bow and I took waves over the gunnel. Um, it didn't have a lot of freeboard and I was filling up with water and I really thought I was going to be in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, that was the last time I paddled that boat in the Chesapeake Bay. I went and got my, my sit-on-top kayak that you see in all my videos. Um, so, the other uh, downside, I guess you would call it, or just, let's call it neutral. We're not going to say down or up. We're just going to say neutral. But the other thing about a sit-in kayak is uh, the seat comfort. So, I'm in a bona fide EX-123. It's really a unicorn in the industry for all the boats that I've paddled. Um, if there's a boat out there that you think rivals it, let me know, and I'll try to get my hands on it and paddle it for you guys. 
but it has a seat very much similar to what's on the SS-127. It's not exactly the same, but the back is pretty much the same. The, the way the seat is shaped is, is really close, okay? It's a really close second to the seat on an SS-127. Most of them, you're sitting down on the bottom of the boat. Um, you're going to get wet. Um, kayak fishing is not a dry thing. But you're sitting down in a boat that doesn't drain because it doesn't have scupper holes. Sit on top kayaks have scupper holes, which basically allows the water to drain out to the level. Um, that's a whole different video. These don't have it. Okay, unless you've got a baler pump or a sponge to get water out of the boat, whatever water is in this cockpit is in the cockpit. Um, this has an elevated seat. Most of them that I've been in don't have elevated seats, so you're kind of down inside, and it's not the, the best seating position. Um, hull rigidity is another, whoops, knocked my camera over. Hull rigidity is another, another aspect of it. Um, again, I'm in, <laughs> you can, I've got videos of this boat on my channel you can go look at, but the, the sidewalls of this boat, the, the sides of the cockpit are reinforced. They've got structural I-beams, so there's no flex in this boat, really. Um, it's very rigid. It's very stiff. Uh, so most of your sitting kayaks, aside, aside from this, this Bonafide, aren't going to have that. Uh, rigging options. So as far as a platform to build on and to have a lot of options for rigging, um, the sit-in kayaks are going to limit you. A sit-on-top kayak has a lot more surfaces, a lot more flat areas, that you can screw into, attach things to, rod holders, paddle keepers, depth finders, places to put batteries inside of compartments and hatches and hide wires and all of those sorts of things. So if you're really hardcore into fishing, then a sit-in is not your boat. A sit-on-top is going to be your boat. If I was to drill through this and mount something here, then the screw's protruding on the inside of the cockpit where I could hit it. Um, there's not a lot of places on most sit-in kayaks for uh, mighty mounts and track mounts and all those sorts of things. Um, again, this is a special boat. They thought about that. There are surfaces on this boat, but nowhere near the amount of mounting options that you have on the, the sit on top bona fides. This boat is quick. Um, length and width, a long boat is faster than a short boat. The ratio of length to width, so whatever that ratio is, if you think about your touring kayaks, they are really skinny boats and they're really long. I've paddled some of those. They don't have the stability laterally, but they are crazy fast, like miles an hour fast for the same amount of effort as a fishing kayak. This boat is about as long. It's not as wide as an SS-127 or even my Feel Free. This is a fast boat. Um, I've paddled this boat flat out before and it is fast. It throws a curl off the off the tail of the boat. Like you have a little wake. You can move water with this boat. Now, it's not wide. Your sit on top kayaks are a lot wider and there's a lot of stability and that's where all those surfaces come in and like the the SS127 is a flat boat. It does not wobble. You're going to there's a little bit of a trade off there. This boat is a lot faster. But again, if I had to be in rough water, I would rather be in a sit on top versus this one. Speed doesn't help you if the water gets rough. Uh, the other thing that I really missed when I launched this boat was a rudder. Um, the Bonafide has flex wings that mount to the bottom of the boat, which help it and uh, create some lateral stability left, right. There's no rudder pin in the back. Um, there's no steering you know, capable with this boat on the pedals that you have on a sit on top. And when I launched in this wind, I was immediately aware that I did not have a rudder on this boat as the wind pushed the rear of the boat around as I was trying to paddle. I was going this way and the wind blew and it just started to do this. That's very, I was sketched out. That wasn't very comfortable. Uh, I really wish I had a rudder. So for the most part, you're not going to have a rudder on a sit-in kayak. You're in a, being able to bring tackle with you. So most of your sit-on-top kayaks will not take a milk crate. They're certainly not going to take a black pack. Um, so you're not going to be able to bring but so much tackle with you. Uh, you're also not going to be able to have that milk crate with the extra six rod holders on it. So you're going to be stuck with the two that are on the boat and maybe putting a rod holder up here or, you know, two rod holders off on the side. So maybe four rods comfortably. My, my 
sit on top with the crate. I think I can carry like nine rods in the boat with me and probably five or six tackle boxes. And that's just in the back. I could bring more if I put it in the hatches and that sort of thing, and I did when I went camping. It's a very leisurely thing. Like you maybe have a couple rods, um, a few tackle boxes. I've got some room down here in, in the cockpit where I could put stuff, but for the most part, you're not bringing all that tackle. Going from that to the next piece, this is not a tournament ready vessel. So if you're thinking that, hey, I'm gonna get into kayak fishing and maybe I'll do a few tournaments, you wanna sit on top. Um, if I had a bump board, there's nowhere to set that bump board in here to comfortably measure fish and take a photo. Um, you can't really get down in between your legs because you're limited. You can't spread your legs apart, that sort of thing. So this is not a vessel that's ideally suited for tournament fishing. If you're going to be floating rivers and white water is an option or any type of rapids again, like we talked about water coming in the boat, um, I would take a sit on top. Um, the sit on top, I've actually punched through rapids and completely gone under in my sit on top. And what it does, it comes back up and all that water that's around my feet drains out of the scupper plugs and my boat is, is operational. Had I done that in this boat, um, I guarantee you, when I went underwater, this thing would have filled up, it wouldn't have come up, I'd have gotten tumbled in the rapids, I'd have lost tackle, I'd have lost gear, and none of that sounds appealing to me. That's just a bad deal. Probably going camping in one of these is a lot easier than going camping in my sit on top because you've got access to the entire hull and you can just stuff it full of, full of gear. Um, the sit on tops have a higher weight rating than the sit ins. Um, I'll put up on the screen what the weight, the load capacity, excuse me, of the EX-123 is compared to the load capacity of an SS-127. So you guys can see what the difference is. The huge upside, the tremendous upside to this sit-in platform is weight. I'll put on the screen right here the difference in weight of an EX-123 Expedition and an SS-127 because it is staggering. If you're not somebody with a lot of upper body strength, if you have to top load the kayak, um, if you've got to put it up in the air when you get home, like up on the wall in the garage or something of that sort, tremendously easier in this boat than any sit in, sit on top kayak, period. Loading this thing over top of a guardrail or just like chucking it down a hill and to get in the water or having to pull it back up a hill to get back to the car or the truck, um, tremendously easier in one of these. Um, I don't want to paint the picture that a sit in kayak is a bad platform. It's just really dependent on what you're gonna do with it and where you're gonna go. All things being considered, I wouldn't want this to be my only vessel, um, but I do plan in the future on getting an EX-123 uh, for nothing else other than it's super light, it's super stable, and it is fast as lightning. The other thing, which I, I didn't say this, you're not standing up on a sit-in kayak. They're just not designed with that kind of stability to allow you to stand up in one of these boats. That being said, everybody over at Bonafide did a fantastic job because you can stand in an EX-123. There are pads in the floor and it is stable enough and with the seat adding the rigidity, you can stand up in an EX-123 sit-in kayak and fish. So if you can get past not being able to carry all the tackle, not having access to all the rods, um, and you know, flipping the boat is a problem if it flips. Um, this is, a sit-in kayak might be the boat for you. Again, the main things that are gonna draw you to a sit-in versus a sit-on are weight, maneuverability, for the most part, speed, if you get one that's long enough, because they're just a little bit narrower. But hands down, for my money, if you're looking to buy a fishing kayak, then you're, you're pretty much looking at a sit-on top boat. And truthfully, if you look at the industry, the amount, the number of sit on top kayaks for fishing versus sit in kayaks for fishing is not even close. There's so many more sit on fishing kayaks that it's pretty much the standard platform if you're gonna fish out of one of these boats. So I hope I covered everything. It's gonna be a little bit of a longer video. Um, I wanna appreciate you. Um, I know you're gonna watch this and requested the video. Sorry it took so long to get it out. Uh, everybody stay safe and stay healthy. These are crazy times we're living in right now. Um, if you can do so without endangering anybody, go isolate on a lake in a kayak 
or go in the woods, find somewhere new to fish. Um, don't crowd the boat ramps. Protect your family. Hope everybody has their job. Hope that everybody comes out of this smelling like roses. Uh, I think about you guys every day. I appreciate you for subscribing. Thank you for watching my way of fishing. Now get out there and fish your way. This is a fast boat. This is a very fast boat.